Hey guys, so today I'm going to teach you everything I know about taking rolling shots. Um, I get asked all the time on Instagram how I did certain things, um, how I took certain photos, and I keep telling everyone that I'm going to make a rolling shots tutorial. Um, I've tried a few times, but every time I try and build them out on the field uh, to get some you know, behind the scenes action and actually show you guys, but I always get distracted and I always forget I'm terrible. I'm always running around, I'm always talking to everyone, so I thought this would be the easiest way to actually do it. Uh, now, there's a fair few things to go through, so I would recommend um, getting a pen and paper and taking some notes, different settings, camera gear, you know, everything you need to know, a bit of a checklist. Um, otherwise, you know, watch the video a few times until you can remember. So the first thing I'll talk about is camera settings to use when taking rollers. So you do need a camera that has manual um, or a shutter priority. I would recommend manual. If you're not comfortable in manual, definitely practice. This is probably a good time to practice because when you're taking rollers, you do take so many photos and you can use EAV bracketing as well um, if you're not 100% certain on the exposure. The first setting you need to know is the shutter and it's the most important part when taking rollers to get that motion blur. You need to make sure that at minimum, you at least have the wheels blurred out so you can see the calipers and you can see through the wheel. And then anything slower shutter than that, you're just gonna add extra motion blur to the picture, which will make it look really nice. The general rule of thumb and an easy one to remember is to half the shutter of the speed you're going. So if you're going 100 kilometers an hour or 110, you wanna shoot at about a 50th or a 60th now you can shoot higher and you can shoot lower, but that's a good place to start, depending on how bumpy the road is and all that kind of stuff. If you're on a really smooth road uh, and there's no bumps to bump the camera, you can then go a lot slower. Uh, I know some people would have even shot at a fifth or a tenth of a second, uh, but obviously the lower you go, there's a lot more risk of a road, like a bump in the road or something bumping the camera and making a blurry photo. So it's easy to start around half and then go from there. So the other two settings are obviously ISO and aperture. Now because you're shooting at such a low shutter speed, especially during the day, your ISO is usually always gonna be as low as possible. And then you just use your aperture to adjust the exposure, to have a correct exposure. And always be careful not to blow your highlights out. It's always good to underexpose just a little bit with digital cameras, and then you can bring it up. Um, they hold a lot more detail in the shadows than they do in the highlights. Now the only problem with higher apertures uh, when shooting during the day is you do get a lot of dust spots um, and this is a dust spot here I've butchered the camera settings on this photo just so you can see them easier um, there's one here and there's a heap in the road now they show up at higher f numbers um, just because more is in focus so you need to make sure that your lens and your camera sensor is as clean as possible I think these are on the sensor of my camera itself because I shot this on my 6500 and I use this one for video so I'm changing lenses a lot in really dirty places so so that's the only thing you got to be careful of make sure your lens and your sensor is as clean as possible if you don't have a uh, cleaning cloth and a blower I definitely get one the cleaning cloth and the blower is obviously good for getting dust and marks off your lens and the blower like I wouldn't touch your camera sensor at all but if you do have dust on it, a blow is really good just to blow the dust off without actually physically touching it. And there's uh, plenty of videos on YouTube as well to show you how to do that. They're the main settings as far as exposure goes. Make sure the shutter's low enough to at least get complete blur in the wheels so you can see the brakes and adjust from there with your aperture to get the exposure right. A few more in-camera settings you need to adjust. Uh, one of them is the focus area. You want to adjust that to a single point is what I prefer and I usually have it in the middle of the frame or just slightly down in the middle uh, and that way I know where to point the camera at in the car to get focus on the car and you want to have it on continuous autofocus. The reason you want it on continuous autofocus is because you want your shutter mode to be in burst. I'll take a burst of about five to ten shots and then I'll wait for a few seconds or recompose and then I'll hold it down again. The reason you want to do that is because there's bumps in the road, um, so your car that you're in is going to get, get bumps, they're going to go over bumps, and there's also going to be wind and all kinds of stuff as well. So if you burst of about five to ten photos each time, when you load them on the computer, you can go through them like this and choose the ones that are going to be sharp. For example, 
and I like to zoom in a little bit to load it up. This one's fairly sharp. Everything's good, everything's good. There's not many, there's like the wheels, so you can see there the wheels are completely blurred out. This was at a sixtieth of a second at a hundred. So you've got good blur in the wheels, you've got good blur in the road. The trees over here have more blur. Um, but it's sharp, the car itself is sharp. Now this one, you can see there I've hit a bump or they've hit a bump. Here as well. So it's a little bit out of focus because I've hit a bump or they've hit a bump or there's been wind that's bumped the camera or something. So you'll see sharp, blurry, 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 blurry. That's the one I was showing you with the dust spots. Blurry. So that's why it's important to burst because if you burst in 10, at least one of them is hopefully going to be sharp. Now as far as camera gear goes, I'll always shoot on a wide angle lens. Now you don't want a fish eye kind of wide, you just want wide. So on a crop sensor I'd shoot at about a 16 or an 18 millimeter. Um, they're pretty cheap on crop sensors even if you just get little pancakes, 16 or 18 mil. And on a full frame camera you're going to want to shoot at like 24 or 28 at 30, maybe 35 at the most. And you can test out why if you have those lenses. If you get a 200 or 100 millimeter lens and you zoom right in, you'll see that you can see every little jitter that your hands are doing, you can see all the bumps. It just exaggerates all the movement and not in a good way. And if you do it with a wide lens, you'll see there's a lot less jitter. So the wider the lens, the less jitter and the less blurry things are going to be from camera shake. Um, but a wide lens will also show a lot more motion blur in the road, especially if you have the car completely sighted on like this. And I'll show you some examples here of why. So, rolling shots. Now, this one is shot at 100 mil, and you can see the car looks brilliant. Um, the car looks really nice and sharp. There's a little bit of blur here and there. Like there is blur, but it's not crazy. Like it's not an awesome blurred out roller. And this is personal preference. Like if you want to shoot at 100 mil, you can, but it is harder to get a sharp shot. Uh, now this one, where is it? This one here was shot at 18 mil and the car's a little bit more side on. And you can see, where did we go? Between this one and this one, there's so much more motion blur. There's a lot more motion blur in the background. You can see all the blur in the road. The car stands out. This is just personal preference, I suppose, but it is recommended to shoot on wide lens. Um, the brake, the Brembo's, not Brembo's, the JDM's, uh, the calipers, everything's shown up really well. And that's why it's my preferred one. I got a nice little lens flare through here too. So a wide lens gives a lot more depth to the photo for rollers because you're usually shooting on the road and there's like one lane or two lanes if you like, you've got like a four lane highway. Um, but to get the most, most motion blow, you want the car completely sideways, like parallel to you as well or back just a little bit so you can see a bit of the front of the car and that will give you the most blur. If you're driving along for example, um, just driving along in the car, if you look, you know, if you look to your side right next to you, you'll see the trees and everything going past really quick and then if you look in front of you, like the further away in the distance, the less blur and movement there is. So if you're shooting side on parallel to the car, you're going to get some crazy motion blur um, in the background and the road as well as tell the drivers and whoever you're taking photos with um, is that obviously to try and position them and get them to try and be next to you, parallel to you, or back just one car length. And if there's multiple lanes, you want them to be in the furthest lane away from you and parallel just so you can get all that blur in from shooting side on. Um, you also need to be going exactly the same speed, if not very close to it. So I usually just tell them, go the speed limit. Um, if it's 100, kilometers an hour, just tell them to go 100 and you go 100, even set cruise control. Um, and that way they're not moving through the frame. They're staying, that's how you get the blur in the first place with the slow shutter. They're staying in the exact same spot on the sensor in your frame. And the background and everything's moving past it and the wheels are spinning around, but the car itself isn't moving through the frame. So you need to be going the same speed as them to get their car 
as sharp as possible and then you burst so you can choose the ones that don't have any bumps. Um, if you're hanging out the window a little bit, like personally I don't hang right out of a window. Um, I'll put my arms out the window and hang the camera down low and then I'll do it from high as well and then normal just for some different angles. Um, and then obviously sometimes you need to put your head out the window just a little bit to see your screen and it helps if you have a flip screen as well so you can see um, but personally I don't hang my whole waist out the window like some people do, it's just dangerous you need to be very careful um, of any like cars in front of you if there's any trucks that you're driving past that are going slow or like for some reason if you're not in the far lane and you're doing it like um, on the last, like you're on the edge of the road like you gotta be careful if there's like street signs or poles. Um, that's why you want to do it on multiple lanes, and you want to have a fair bit of distance between you from anything else. And just tell the driver as well to keep an eye out for anything, and don't get them to tell you like if there's something dangerous. Like get them to just grab you, reach across, grab you, punch you, whatever, and just jump in the car. I haven't had it happen to me. Um, I haven't had it happen to any friends, luckily. But just be careful because it can be dangerous. Um, another tip as well is always take your sunglasses and your hats off. Um, the amount of sunglasses I forgot to take off, stuck my head out the window to look at the camera and you know lost them on the highway. Um, so always take any headwear off as well. And if you have a camera strap or a short camera strap, strap always wrap it around your wrist or your hand or something just in case you do drop your camera. I have dropped mine before and luckily I've had a strap on. Now another really cool rolling shot I love to do is actually out the back of a car. Um, if you have a friend with a convertible or they have one of those hatches at the back where you can just open the window without opening the whole hatch. Um, you can just open the back window, sit in the back seat and shoot through that. Awesome. Um, but what I like to do if it's a quiet road um, in the middle of nowhere and you only have to go 20-30 kilometers an hour to do this um, is I like to sit in the boot like with this photo here, you can see my leg there. And if you follow me on Instagram, like I'm always live streaming or like posting stories about this as well. So you can always see behind the scenes or just ask me if you see me out and about, like I'm always happy to talk to people on Instagram. Um, is with this shot, we were going about 40 kilometers an hour. Now this looks like a big windy hill, but it actually wasn't. It was just a small little road um, going up to the dam. So it was, you know, it was 50 kilometers an hour anyway, or 40. Um, it was very quiet, no one was there, it was late on a weekend and it, it was very safe really. I'm sitting inside the boot, um, a hatch and I'm fine in there. Some people if you're going faster, like if you see Crispy Media or something like that, they've always got seat belts on and like a, if you're going to be hanging out of the back of a van at 100 k's an hour, you definitely want to be strapped in. Obviously it is illegal and you need to be careful. Um, but this was at a 50th of a second again. You can go at a 30th because you're only going slow if you want. Um, so 50th of a second, shooting wide so you get all this motion blur, you get the whole road and stuff in it. And that just makes a really cool shot. People love that kind of stuff. So that's another tip as well to do, but just make sure it's on a quiet road and make sure it's not bumpy. And make sure you're not gonna get in trouble. So really that's the basics and everything you need to know to get started with taking rolling shots. Just practice. I will make an updated tutorial in the near future with a few more tips, um, hopefully out in the field with behind the scenes so you can see what I do there. Um, but just to recap, shutter speed around 50 or 60 if you're going 100 and then play with it from there. Try and get as low as possible but with still getting at least one or two sharp shots of the car in burst mode. Um, the smoother the road the better. Make sure both the cars are going the same speed. Shoot on a wider lens um, just to get less jitter and obviously to get more blur and stuff in with the road. It really exaggerates the blur going through it, especially if you can get close to the car, which in most cases you're not going to have a choice unless you've got lots of lanes on the highway. Um, aperture, just adjust the aperture for your exposure, but just remember if you shoot at a really high aperture you're going to have issues with lens with dust spots on the lens um, so just keep an eye out for those and make sure your lens is as clean as possible but really just go from there mess around have fun go to some cruises pre-meets are a good way to practice if there's any local 
um, events on. Um, if there's no pre-meets and there's a local car show, maybe make your own pre-meet. Uh, meet up somewhere an hour or so beforehand, hang out for 20 minutes, talk to people and then go for a drive there along the highway and try and get rolling shots. Um, I wouldn't really recommend just pointing at any cars as you drive along because you never know, like some drivers are a bit crazy if they're just random people on the road. Um, but apart from that, just practice, have fun. Uh, ask me any questions on Instagram, I'll drop the link below. Um, and I'm happy to talk to people all the time and I'm always doing stories out and about. So keep an eye on those too. Now if you do want to know any more tips or tricks um, or see any photos that, that I do that you like, um, drop a comment below or message me. I uh, probably will make more videos about shooting cars and tips as well. I probably won't do too many about editing just yet, um, but definitely happy to help people get better shots to begin with and practice in general. I uh, also plan to do more vlogs now as well, out and about, so you can see what I get up to, apart from just Instagram and putting them on YouTube. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, I hope I helped some of you guys out.